Hey everybody, Gleecon here again for another episode of Lore of Warcraft. Um, we are now on the final uh, episode of the third chapter. Um, this one's called The Burdens of Shao Hao, and it takes us to 10,000 years before the Dark Portal mark, um, which is where the fourth chapter will start off as well. Um, at the end of this one, I'll show you a map of what the world looks like now, and... Uh, We'll get ready to launch that final chapter before the, um, I, I don't know, either the next book in this series starts or, or maybe we'll get some Let's Plays. Uh, we'll, we'll find that out together, kind of keep an element of surprise for myself. Because if we've got a whole nother um, 60, 70 episodes to make before we even start the Let's Plays, um, might be might be discouraging, might seem daunting. So if that's how it is, that's how it is, but we'll, we'll just play it by ear. Um, the downside of this last chapter is it is almost as long, um, the chapter four, which will start on the next episode is almost as long as all the other ones combined. It's about 30 ish episodes long, and this will be our 44th around 45th episode. So even though we're starting the last one, we still have a little bit of time to go. Um, I should start in the next month or so here, be able to start cranking out content much faster, um, just due to my work schedule makes it hard but i should be able to hit a stretch where i can start cranking out a lot more content um here in about a month or month or month and a half all right here we go the sundering decimated life across the face of azeroth but one secluded region of southern kalimdor miraculously escaped destruction pandaria for centuries a succession of peaceful emperors had ruled over the mysterious land Prior to the Burning Legion, Legion's invasion, a new Pandaren ruler had taken the throne brimming with confidence and hope about his future. His name was Shao Hao, and although he did not know it at the time, his reign would mark the beginning of a new chapter in Pandaria's history. As was tradition among new emperors, Shao Hao consulted a mystic Jin Yu water speaker to glean knowledge of what the future held. The news he heard was dire. The Jin Yu foresaw a horrific invasion of ravenous demons kingdoms engulfed in sickly green fire, and the land itself howling in pain and torment. Plagued with uncertainty, Shao Hao went to see the legendary August Celestials and his great friend the Monkey King in order to make sense of the terrible vision. With their help, the Emperor expelled the dark emotions that troubled his heart, his doubt, despair, fear, anger, hatred, and violence. Um, what do they call those? The Shahs, I think, maybe, or what they're called? Or Ka, something like that. Oh, the Shah. I'm looking at the bottom Shah of Pride. So that's what Pandaria expansion is all about, fighting those things. As he did so, these negative traits took on physical form. They manifested into powerful spiritual entities known as the Shah. We could have just been patient. One by one, Shao Hao used his wisdom to battle these Shah and lock them away deep beneath Pandaria. There they would remain, festering beneath the earth. To stand watch over these imprisoned Shah, Shao Hao also founded the Shadow Pan, an elite order of highly trained Pandaren soldiers. A few episodes back, I couldn't remember what they were called. I think they're pretty awesome. They're one of my favorite things from Pandaria. Um, brimming with uh, newfound confidence and purpose, Shao Hao set out to spare Pandaria from the sundering that was to come. He planned to do so by separating his land from the rest of Kalimdor. The Emperor would perform his grand task in the heart of Pandaria, the sacred veil of eternal blossoms. In the Vale, Shao Hao focused his powers to sever his empire from Kalimdor, yet try as he might, he could not succeed. His doubts and fears returned. Across Pandaria, the imprisoned Shah stirred to life and feasted on the Emperor's uncertainties. As the Legion's fell magic set the heavens alight, Shao Hao desperately called upon the aid of the wisest August Celestial, the Jade Serpent. She appeared in the roiling skies and told Shao Hao that Pandaria was more than just his empire. Everything in Pandaria was connected. Everything in Pandaria was one. It was then that Shao Hao understood the Jade Serpent's advice. To save his land, he would need to become one with it. Despite his dream of living a long and prosperous life, he knew it was not to be. With his mind clear and his heart set on the task ahead, Shao Hao merged his spirit with the land itself and forced it to break away from the rest of Kalimdor. His very essence shrouded Pandaria in a thick mist that would hide it from the outside world, and protected from the terrible sundering. For the next 10,000 years, Pandaria would remain hidden, and it faded into legend. Kind of cool. 
the Shah of Pride. There was one negative emotion that Xiao Hao never purged from himself, pride. It would silently lurk in Pandaria in the millennia after the emperor spared his people and his land from the sundering. I kind of think he's a, uh, like a great raid boss, kind of, or one of those world bosses that you can beat. Like it. All right, so what do we have here? Um, this is what the world looked like looks like after the Well of Eternity was just destroyed and we have the maelstrom in its wake uh, and it has separated us into really a, a bunch of different continents the two mega continents that we know um so let's kind of start there you start with the two main continents which which are classic there's kalimdor um, we have eldrathalas uh, I don't really know what that is. I think that becomes like Ashen Vale and stuff. You have Zulfarak, which is down there in the Tanaris type region. So you still have Old Doom, which they don't really is locked until Cataclysm. You have Ankaraj, which is the the climax of um, the classic experience. You have Mount Hyjal, which is where the Wild Guards are, and also where um, that's also locked until Cataclysm. The Veiled Sea is keeping these, these don't, this is where the Draenei land, um, that's locked until Burning Crusade. On the flip side of the Great Sea, you have Zulgrub, um, that's uh, Stranglethorn Vale. You have Uldaman, which that's part of Classic, you can experience that. Um, this, these are called the Eastern Kingdoms. This is where all the humans begin and everything, and the dwarves. And you have Zulaman at the top, which that, that's locked until Burning Crusade. And that Forbidden Sea cuts that off. You also have the South Sea down there. I, I don't know if that gets a name quite right at first, or if that's waiting, waiting until Pandaria. Um, you do have Kazan, which is the goblin, which that's unlocked in Cataclysm as well. Before that stuff, you do have the Frozen Sea in the Wrath of Lich King expansion, which gets you Northrend with Asgul Narab, Asgul Narab, Wormrest Temple, um, Gundrak, Ulduar, and I can't really read what that says. Shond Shondaral? I don't know what that is, but that's basically right around the center where Crystal Song Forest is and near where the Lich King goes. Um, again, Cataclysm kind of opens up. We've talked about those things because those were on those ca continents. Cataclysm, as we know, doesn't really give us very many... It doesn't give us new actual zones. It gives us little pockets of new lands. Um, after that comes Mists of Pandaria, which you have down here, the South Sea and Pandaria, the Wandering Isle, which is the starting zone, the Turtle. Um, you have the Isle of Thunder and Thundering Mountain. That's actually the end of Pandaria. You have the Mog Mogushan Vol Vaults, like that's at the north. Um, you have the Veil of Eternal Blossoms in the center. You have Mantivest over to the side. That's part of the original Pandaria experience. Um, after that, you have Draenor. doesn't really come into play. Then you have Legion, which Legion is the Broken Isles, where you have Suramar and the Tomb of, Sar the tomb of Sargeras. Um, I think Najatar is part of that expansion as well. The, the Yeah, it is the... Where Lady Vaj and all that stuff is. Um, Tomb of Sargeras is a dungeon type of, or raid, one of the two. Suramar is, and all these realms, that's where the Pillars of Creation are. Um, and then you also see, we have a Zandalar here. Um, but you don't, we don't have the rest. Interesting. Um, it, you have Zandalar, but you don't have the other little piece. Um, so this is obviously this book or this map. I believe it looks like it was written before uh, Battle for Azeroth because you don't have the other little islands, the uh, Kul Tiris, um, where those are. You don't really see um, Bajir over here. Okay, so there are some things. So this looks like it's pre-BFA, which makes sense timeline wise 
All right, so we are there. The world has been sundered, basically the world as we know it, minus a few little tweaks that need to be retconned in. Um, and we are, are getting really close. We're 10,000 years away, but in the grand scheme of things, um, we're, we're much closer than we were before. All right, guys, um, happy that we're here. Happy we made it through this journey, three quarters of the way through this first Chronicles book, uh, kind of, depending on how you want to do the math. And I look forward to doing the next episode of uh, Lore of Warcraft with all of you. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye-bye. <laughs>